Unpack your kit and give the fabric a press to remove any creases. You can now start cutting out all the pieces. Cut around the outer edge of all the pieces on the panel. It's important that you remember which piece is which. So label them or cut out the printed description above each one and pin it to the top edge of the relevant fabric piece to remind you. Once you've cut all the pieces out, put them to one side so that you can use them as you make your first aid case. Let's start by making the top lining of your first aid case. Take the zip pocket lining and place it wrong sides up so the top edge is on the left hand side. Take a tape measure and mark one and a half inches to the right of this top edge. Take a ruler and join these marked points together so that you've got a line running down the fabric. Take your tape measure again and measure quarter of an inch to the left of the line at the top and at the bottom. Then measure quarter of an inch to the right of the line at the top and the bottom. Take your ruler again and join these lines up. You can use an erasable pen or a pencil for this as it's on the wrong side of the fabric so it won't be seen. Turn the fabric round and take your tape measure and mark the centre point of the fabric piece on these lines. This will be three and three quarter inches. You now need to draw a line that's five and a half inches long. This is going to be the size of the zip box. If you place your ruler at the two and three quarter inch mark on this centre point, you'll be in the right place. Turn the fabric round and draw straight lines across all three of your lines at either end to make a rectangular box. Now draw short diagonal lines that go from the top corner to the centre mark at either end. The outer drawn box will be the sewing line and the inner central line and the diagonal lines are the cutting lines. Now take the zip pocket outer. Place the zip pocket outer and the mark zip pocket lining right sides facing. You need to match all the raw edges all the way round. Pin together. You're only going to be stitching the zip box at the moment. So you just need to pin, pin it together just outside it, not all the way round the edges of the fabric. You're now going to stitch around the outer marked box, not the centre or the diagonal lines. When this is done, remove all the pins. Fold the fabrics in half and just make a very small snip through all the layers just to get you started. Now open them up, put your scissors in that little snip and cut all the way along until you reach the diagonal lines. Just the end of them. When you get to the end of the diagonal lines, cut into the corners, but be really careful at this point that you don't cut the stitching. If you do accidentally, don't worry, just go back and restitch it. But try not to, because this will make the post box opening more secure. Now, to get a neater finish, open out these cut lines so, and just finger press them open. This will help you when you turn it right sides out to get a neater post box opening. Just press them with your fingers, the long edges and the short edges. Now, post one piece through to the other piece 
which feels a bit strange, but you'll get a really neat finish and a neat zip by doing it this way. Take your time with this. All the raw edges need to match around the edge all around and the seam on the post box opening needs to lay right on the edge. You can work from both sides by just pulling them outwards, match the raw edges and then give it a really good press. This does take a little time but is worth the effort for a neat finish. Take your iron when you finish doing that and give it a press and just roll the seams gently with your fingers just to make sure that they are on the edge. Once it's all nice and flat, take the pocket zip and place it right sides up. Place the zip pocket outer right sides up on top so that the teeth lay centrally inside the post box opening. You can see that the zip slider is sticking out a little bit from the left hand side. Leave that where it is for now because it's easier to pin the zip beneath the post box opening and keep it straight when the zip teeth are closed. So pin the zip tape to the edge of the post box opening all the way around. If you prefer, you can use fabric glue for this, but I'm just using pins in this video. Before you pin the left hand edge, just make sure it's straight and even as you go, but before you pin the left hand edge, undo the slider and place it so that it's in the center of the opening. Now you can pin the left hand edge and it's all nice and flat. You now need to carefully touch, stitch the zip into place all the way around using a zip foot. Your zip is now neatly stitched in place Trim off the other end of the zip that you don't need and there we are, a neat zip pocket. Take the top lining and place it right sides up. Take the zip pocket out and zip pocket lining that you put the, have just put the zip into and place it right sides up on top of the right side of the top lining. Now pin it into place all the way around the outer edges so that they're matching. Just double check that you've got both fabric pieces right sides up at this stage. Pin together all the way round and then tack into place all around the edges within the seam allowance. Once this is done, this completes the top lining. You've got a zip neatly inserted. You can see the lining fabric inside. Put it to, side, to one side for now because you're going to be using it later. Now we're going to make the base lining. Place the base pocket outer and the base pocket lining right sides facing and pin together along the right hand straight edge only. Match the raw edges when you pin them together. Now sew together along this edge. Open out the two pieces that you've just joined together and press this seam open. This will give you a neater finish to the edge of your pocket. Fold the two pieces so they are now wrong sides facing and press the seam on the right hand edge. So it lies right on the, the very edge of the pocket. This is going to be the pocket opening. Now top stitch down this edge just to keep it neat and hold it into place. Take the base lining, and you can take the label off at this point, put the pocket on top, matching the top and bottom edges and that curved side edge. Pin them together all the way round, making sure the raw edges stay matched up. Now tack it together all the way around the edge but obviously leaving the right hand side edge open because that's where you're going to put your pocket. Your base lining is now finished, so put it to one side for now. Now we're going to make and attach the handle. Take the handle piece and fold it in half lengthways with right sides together. Pin together down the long edge so that the raw edges match. 
sew together down this edge. Turn the handles right sides out and press and then top stitch down both long edges to make a nice neat handle. Take the spine outer and from the left hand side measure and mark with a pin three quarters of an inch across. Now fold this in half wrong sides together just to find the centre and move the pin so that it's placed centrally across there and in the three quarters of an inch mark position. Repeat this on the right hand side again measuring three quarters of an inch in from the side and then make sure the pin is placed centrally across. These positions mark the ends of where your handle will be attached. Place the fabric flat. Take your handle, fold the short edges in under by half an inch on each side and pin into place. Pin one end of the handle at the marked pin, make sure it's, cent it's central and then pin it into place. Take the other end of the handle and place that at the mark pin, again making sure it's central. You can use the print on the fabric of the spine outer to make sure it's, to check to see if it's placed centrally across. Now stitch, you'll find the loop, the handle loops in the centre. Stitch a square with a cross at either end, like this, that will give it some strength. And then the handle is looped between so that you can carry it. Your handle is now neatly attached. Making the zip gusset. Take the case zip and place it right sides together with the bottom zip gusset outer so that the top long raw edge of the fabric matches up with the zip tape. The zip needs to place, be placed centrally across and pin it into place all the way along the edge so that the edge of the zip tape matches the raw edge of the fabric and that they are right sides together. Once you've pinned it into place, tack it together all the way along within the seam allowance. About half an eighth of an inch is fine. Now take the bottom zip gusset lining and place it right sides down on top, matching the top raw edges of the fabric piece so that the zip is sandwiched between them. Again, pin them together all the way along, matching the raw edges. The zip tape will stay in place because you have already stitched it in place. Doing this in advance does make a neater finish to your zip. You can use glue if you prefer before you stitch, entirely up to you. Now stitch the three layers together using a zip foot and using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You'll see the three the zip is sandwiched between them. Now open up the two bottom zip gusset fabrics so that they are wrong sides facing. Take the top zip gusset outer and pin it so the bottom long edge is matching the top of the zip tape and pin it together all the way along. You're going to attach the top zip gusset outer and the top zip gusset lining to the other side of the zip tape in exactly the same way as you did with the other two pieces. So just pin the top, the top zip gusset outer in place, tack it in place, then the lining and stitch together. Now there's the top zip gusset is joined to one side of the zip and the bottom zip gusset outer and lining are joined to the other. Refold them so they are wrong sides facing so that you've got the top zip gusset at the top, then the zip and then the bottom zip gusset at the bottom.
It's worth taking a little bit of time here to press them so that the seams lay right on the edge, but do take care that you don't catch the edges of the nylon teeth with your zip. Now top stitch along both edges and you will have a really neatly inserted zip that's got an outer on one side and lining on the other. Now, the zip gusset is now not exactly the right width, so we've got to trim it. Zip tapes can vary in width, so it's e easier and neater if you put the zip in first and then trim it. We want our zip gusset to be three inches wide. So, use a rotary cutting ruler. That's the easiest thing for this because then you can measure the exact distance. If you don't have one, just use a pencil and ruler and mark the measurements. I've positioned mine so that the edge of the top zip gusset outer by the zip is one inches from the raw edge of the fabric and I've cut that one off. But you can change that um, to whatever trimming you want as long as you cut off about the same from the top and the bottom. Once you've cut one side, I'm just showing part it part cut here, then measure three inches so that it's exactly three inches to the other side. It's worth planning this before you cut the top so you know how much you're cutting off the top and bottom. Again, if you don't have a rotary cutter and a ruler, you can just mark it with a pencil and use a pair of scissors. Now your gusset, zip gusset, is three inches wide. Trim the ends of the zip gusset that has the closed end of the zip so the raw ends of the zip tape are level. Now place the left short end of the spine outer, right sides facing with this trimmed end of the zip gusset. Place the spine lining, right sides facing on the other side of the zip gusset so that it's sandwiched between the two and pin together. You'll see that the outer and lining are either side of the zip gusset. Stitch together down this edge to stitch all three layers together. Open them out so they are, the spine pieces are wrong sides facing. Then top stitch down this edge. That will just neaten it and hold the spine in place. The zip gusset is longer than you need so that you can pin, trim and stitch it into place. On the top long edge and the bottom long edge of the spine, measure and mark two and a half inches from the left hand side. Move the pins so that they are only in the outer and not in the lining. Now take the top outer, fold it in half and mark the top of the center and the bottom of the center point with pins. Take the zip gusset with the spine attached and match up those top marked pins of the top outer and the zip gusset outer. Now we're going to pin the zip gusset all the way around the edge of the top outer. When you reach the place where the spine is attached to the zip, you'll be sewing and pinning the lining and the outer together. At the corners, make small snips. These need to be a little less than the quarter of an inch so that the snips don't extend into the seam once you've stitched it. You only snip, need to snip round the corners. Place pins vertically through the top zip gusset outer, the top zip gusset lining and into the top outer. You'll need to open them out slightly so that they make a nice curve around the edge. The aim here is that you don't have any pleats in the top zip gusset, but that it lays flat, right sides facing on the top outer. So pay, place the pins quite close together when you're going around these curved edges. Now you can pin it together down the sides You can place the 
pins when you reach the straight edges, either horizontally or vertically. But make sure the raw edges are matching and both pieces are laying flat. You don't want any pleats or gathers at this point. When you reach the next corner, take a small sharp pair of scissors and again cut small snips, just a little less than the quarter of an inch long, enough to go around the corner. Take pins again and place them vertically through the top zip gusset outer lining. Make sure that those raw edges of the top zip gusset outer and the lining stay together as you pin them round and matching up to the raw edges of the top outer. Taking a bit of time with this is really worth it. You will make sure that you have your zip gusset that will fit beautifully round the edge of the top outer. Now you can pin along the bottom straight edge. Again, make sure all raw edges are matching. When you reach the centre pin at the bottom of the top outer, take a pen and mark where this meets the top gusset outer on the lining section and then put a pin in this place. These matching pins will be used later when you're sewing the whole thing together and it helps to get a nice even finish. So continue stitching, pinning along the bottom edge until we get to our third rounded corner. Again, take a small pair of scissors, make those small snips. You, the s snips will be about along about two inches of the fabric, just enough to go round the corner. Carefully pin all the way around the corner. You will need to open out the top zip gusset outer and lining a little bit as before, just so that it lays nice and flat. and then pin all the way along, keeping the outer and lining together, matching up the raw edges of the top outer as before. Pin all the way down the side. And then we reach the final corner. Again, make those small snips Make sure that you snip through both the top outer and the top lining of the gusset piece. And pin it round the corner, easing it so that it lies, lies nice and flat. You can stop pinning just when you've got round the corner. Now, Open up the zip gusset pieces so you've got just the outer piece. You won't need the lining of the zip gusset. Lay this on top so you can see that it's lying nice and flat. Move the zip gusset out of, out of the way a little bit and pin the spine into place. Mark with a pin quarter of an inch in from the raw left hand edge. I've used a pink pin for this so it's easier to see. And take the pin out so it is only in the spine outer. Now you're going to have to arrange the pieces so that the top zip gusset meets with the pink pin. And take it out and put those pin those pieces together so that it's still quarter of an inch in from the spine outer. And then open it out and make sure it fits nice and flat across the two edges. Now, you're going to have to take out all of the pins that you've put in earlier to pin the zip gusset to the top outer. This does take a bit of time to do pin it into place and then take all the pins out. Keep those central pins in place though. Those are your marker pins that you'll use later. So don't take those out, make sure they stay in place. Take out all of the other pins. This is the best way to make sure that your zip gusset will fit exactly. 
Now you can unpin it, put the top outer to one side because you won't need that. Now pin the two p pin just the move the pin so it is only in the top zip gusset outer because we're now going to trim it to fit. Turn it over so it's right sides up. Now move the zip slider so it's beyond the pin. This is really important because you don't want to cut the zip slider off. So make sure that's well out of the way. Take your tape measure and mark quarter of an inch to the right of this pin. That's so that you've got the seam allowance. The pink pin is the stitching line. And then once it's trimmed, sew across the ends of the zip, just so they don't come undone. Take the other raw end of the spine outer and pin it right sides facing with your trimmed zip gusset. And pin into place at the top and the bottom. That mark is your quarter of an inch mark that you marked earlier with the pink pin. Now, to be able to get the lining and the, the spine lining and outer to go together, you need to roll up this zip gusset and place it so that the spine lining is right sides facing with the spine outer and the zip gusset is between the two. This is exactly the same thing as you did when you pinned and sewed the end of the zip gusset to the spine earlier on. So you can see the spine lining is on one side, the zip gusset between and the spine out on the other side. Now stitch together down that line. You can now unroll it all and you can see that you have made a zip gusset loop that fits exactly. You've got the out on one side and the lining on the other. Arrange it flat and top stitch along that edge as you did before. Now it's time to assemble the case top. Match up the gusset seams where they join the zip gusset. You will have already put pins on the left hand side of the top and bottom as you can see. Fold it in half and lay it flat to, march the, to mark, mark the opposite centre sides. Put a pin at the bottom and a pin at the top. Now you have the opposite centre points marked on your gusset loop. Take the top outer, this is the first piece we're going to put in place, and match the centre pins at the top gusset side to the centre pin. So the spine pin goes at the top. Match those pins, take one out and then pin them together. Making sure that the outer zip gusset piece and the lining gusset zip gusset piece stay together and all the raw edges are matching. Turn it round and match up the centre pins of the bottom edge of the top outer and the other side of the top zip gusset outer. Ch double check that you are pinning the top zip gusset to the case top. Now fold it all inwards because you're going to pin it into place all the way round so that the right sides of the top zip gusset outer are matching the right sides of the top outer. You've already clipped where the curves will go when you were fitting the top uh, the gusset loop. So pin it into place all the way round, easing those corners again, which is easy because you've already snipped them placing vertical pins as you go. Pin, then sew together all the way round. Your top out is now attached. Close the zip and place the t it so the top outer is right sides up. We're now going to attach the top lining. So fold all of the gusset loop to the inside so that it lays flat on the top outer. It's a little fiddly to do this but it will give you a nice neat finish. Place the top lining on top so that the zip side is at the bottom of the case top. 
This will make sense when you turn it right sides out because the pocket will be the right way up. You can double check this if you want before you sew. Now pin the top lining to the top outer. This will have the zip gusset between. It's really important that everything lays flat. So pin it together at the corner, curved corners first. And then pin it together all the way around. Just check as you're going along that none of the gusset loop has got folded inwards because this seam needs to be nice and flat. If you take it slowly and carefully and work all the way around, this is really simple to do. Continue pinning all the way around. Again, just checking every now and then to make sure that everything is laying flat inside. Then you will get a really nice, neat finish. Although it's a bit fiddly, it does mean you don't have to have bound edges at the top and the bottom, which you would when you normally create a zip case like this. Once it's all pinned into place, you're going to stitch it all the way round, but start stitching on the bottom long edge of the top lining. That's the side furthest from the zip. You're going to need a tur to leave a turning gap so that you can turn the whole thing right sides out. So start stitching about two inches away from the centre mark of that side and then stop stitching two inches the other side. So you leave a four inch turning gap. I usually pin this together to keep it all in place. So just remember or mark that turning gap. If you put vertical pins in, then it helps to remind you to start and stop stitching and leaving the gap, as you can see I've done here. Now, sew it together all the way round, making sure that you stitch exactly on top of the original line of stitching that you can see here in navy. This will give you a neat finish. Once it's done, turn it right sides out through the gap you left. And as it turns, push out the corners. The gap is big enough for you to be able to do, so this isn't too fiddly. Double check now, push out all the corners to make sure you haven't caught any parts of the gusset loop and it's nice and even, there are no pleated bits. If there are, simply turn it back the other way and re-sew. Now look at this lovely neat edge with the lining encased inside. So the top is now done. If we open up the zip, you can double check that it's neat on the inside as well. There's the top lining in place, all nice and neat. So all you've got to do now is turn the edge of this under by quarter of an inch so it meets up with that seam. Just like closing the turning gap in a bag. Pin it closed all the way along. You can press it at this stage if you want to make it nice and neat, but as long as you pin it so it just overlaps that seam, so the seam can't be seen, it will look nice and neat. Now it's best to stitch this close by hand. It will be neater and it's a lot easier and you won't see any of the stitches. So take a length of matching thread and a nice sharp needle and attach the thread in one on one side by just working a few small stitches on top of each other until when you tug the thread it's firmly attached. Now slip stitch it closed. To do this take a little thread from one side and then push the needle into the fold on the other side. Have a check every now and then to make sure that your stitches can't be seen from the front. If you make sure that they only go through the lining fabric and not through the outer they won't be seen. 
You can make these stitches quite far apart and then go back and work the seam again or you can make them close together to start with. But just continue slip stitching all the way along by taking a little bit of fabric from the top and then pushing the needle into the fold of the folded under fabric of the top lining. This will give you a really neat finish and you won't even be able to see it. If you have any spare or loose threads that are poking out from the seam, just trim those off. It's worth doing at this stage because it just keeps it nice and neat and then you won't get any loose threads getting caught in the zip as you're going along. Once you get to the other end, work two or three stitches on top of each other in the same way as you did to start with. This will just secure the stitches and stop the whole seam coming, coming undone. Cut off the thread and your top of your case is finished. There you have a nicely neated, neatly inserted zip and the top of your case is done. Time to assemble the case base. Take the base outer, fold it in half to find the centre of the top edge and mark this with a pin. Fold it in half again to find the centre of the bottom edge, make a little crease and mark this with a pin. Take the case and you now need to find those centre points of the bottom zip gusset section. Match the spine seams. You've already marked that with a pin earlier. You can put it back in if it's fallen out. Fold it in half in the same way as you did with the, zup, the top zip gusset outer and mark the centre point with a pin. Now take the base outer and place the zip gusset around it. You're now going to pin these right sides facing. So match the bottom centre pin with the bottom centre pin on the zip gusset and pin together. Make sure you're pinning through all three layers of the base outer, the gusset outer and the gusset lining. It's exactly the same as you did when you did this, the top zip gusset. Mark that centre pin at the other side and pin together. Then you can take out those pins. Now pin it together all the way round. You know that it will fit because it fits the top. You'll have to make the small snips in the bottom zip gusset through the outer and the lining because these weren't made earlier. You only did the tops ones when you were fitting it, but they're done in exactly the same way. If you make snips, for about two and a half inches, two inches along the edge of the gusset at that point. That's about enough. But remember to not make them any more, a little bit less than quarter of an inch. Otherwise, you'll find they'll be seen once the seam is done. It's just small snips to help it ease around the corner. So again, place vertical pins around the corner so that you're pinning both pieces together. So carry on in the same way, pinning the base outer to the gusset all the way round. Pin, then sew it into place so it's nice and neat in the same way as you did with the top. Now we're going to put the base lining on. Fold everything in just like you did with the top outer. Take the base lining with the pocket attached and place it right sides down on top. Again, in the same way as you did with the top lining, pin it into place all round. Pin it 
this is a there's a little bit more bulk this time because the bottom zip gusset is wider than the top so you need to check more as you go along to make it lay flat but it's very flexible so it will lay flat quite easily you just run your finger over the seam to make sure it's laying flat as you go and again mark pin together at all the curved corners then you can you've got it all held in place and then pin together along each side Just double check before you finish that the bottom long edge of the base lining matches the bottom long edge of the base outer. This will mean that your ouch pocket is in the right place. Mark that turning gap again. It's a four inches so if you you can measure it or mark it but just so you remember to stop and start stitching from those points once it's stitched into place in exactly the same way as you did with the top outer you can turn the whole thing right sides out through that turning gap ease it through gently the seams are very secure so it won't come undone but it just helps to keep the raw edges fraying less as you're easing it. Now that's all in place. Again, double check as you go around to make sure that everything is nice and neat. You haven't caught any of the seams inside. You can always go back and re-sew them if you have. There's the ouch pocket in the right place. So again, turn the edges of the turning gap, the top edge under by quarter of an inch. pin into place and then slip stitch closed in exactly the same way as you did with the top outer. And there's your first aid kit, all finished and beautiful. It's got a, the cross on the back, the handle at the top, the ambulance at the front. Undo the zip all the way round and open it up and you're ready to fill it up. The zip at the top you can keep um, scissors, plaster. I put all of my plasters in the bottom and it's all ready to go. How to sew the tablet pouch. Start off by preparing the zip. Take one zip tab, fold it in half widthways with wrong sides together and press. Now open up, fold the outer edges in so they meet in the centre and give it a little press. Then fold it in half again, just like when you make bias binding. And give it a press to hold. Take the pouch zip and cut off the metal end so it reduces bulk. And then place it so that the zip tab is it's right inside the zip tab. So you've got one side on the back and one on the front. And pin it together. This just gives your zip tape a nice neat edge. Top stitch that into place. Now turn the zip round. Fold and press the other zip tab in exactly the same way. And press to hold. And my zip is longer than I need because I think it's easier to work with a zip longer than you actually need and cut it later. Now measure four inches from the end of the first zip tab you stitched in place and mark this four inch mark on the top and bottom, so above and below the zip teeth, just with an erasable pen. Take the zip slider and slide it down to the centre of the zip so it's well out of the way. 
Now measure quarter of an inch to the right of this mark. The mark is where you're going to put the edge of the zip, zip tab. The other mark, this quarter of an inch mark, is where you're going to trim the zip. So trim it along both sides and you can discard those pieces. Take the other zip tab, open it up and place the ends of the zip tape inside so it's sandwiched between the zip tab and pin into place like you did before. I find it helps to put two pins in horizontally. They're easier to remove when you're stitching. Top stitch into place and your zip is ready to go. Now we can insert the zip. Take the pouch out of front and place it right sides up. You'll place your zip on top, centrally on top. You'll have quarter of an inch either side of it. Pin it into place, making sure that you match the edge of the zip tape to the raw edge of the pouch out of front. Stitch it into place very close to the edge, about eighth inch from the seam allowance, and then undo the zip just so it's nearer the right hand end. Take the pouch, one of the pouch lining pieces, and place it right sides down on top so that you're matching those top raw edges. It's the same size as the pouch out of front, so they will match up at the sides as well, and pin it together. Make sure the raw edges match up and the zip tape is sandwiched between them. Now, using a zip foot, stitch it together across the top edge. I always move the slider down to the far end because I'll need to move it again as I stitch. There we are. It's all stitched into place. So you've got open it out. So you've got the lining and the outer wrong sides facing. Take the pouch out of back and place the other side of the zip tape centrally on top in the same way as you did with the pouch out of front. Make sure the side edges are matching and pin it into place. I find it easier to pin up either end first just to make sure that the sides are matching and then I pop a pin in the centre. Again, you're going to need to stitch this into place very close to the edge. It's like a tacking stitch or you can use fabric glue if you prefer. Then, once that's done, take the other pouch lining, place it right sides down on top, matching the top raw edges and the side edges and the other side of the zip, zip tape will be sandwiched between the outer and the lining in the same way as you did with the front. So pin at the ends and then pin at the centre. And using a zip foot and a quarter inch seam allowance as before, stitch it together all the way along. Open out so that the outer and the linings are wrong sides facing. Close the zip. Now make sure that all the raw edges are matching up so that there are no creased parts and give it a press so that the outers and the linings lay nice and flat. It's worth doing this from both sides just so that you get a neat edge. Now from the right side of both of the fabrics, from the outer sides, Now it's flapped from the outer sides, top stitch, either sides of the zip. Now we're going to assemble the zip case. So place the pouch outers right sides facing. Push the zip tabs, fold them so they are facing towards the lining 
and make sure the outer and the lining seams match up. Then pin together. On the other side, fold the zip tab so it faces towards the lining. Again, match up the seams. And pin together. Now pin the linings together, so pin them down the sides. And pin the outers together down the side. Make sure all those raw edges match up, then you'll get a really neat finish. Pin the bottom edge of the outer pieces together, making sure those cut out corner edges match up as well. Pin the other side of the outers together. Then pin the other side of the linings together. When you sew these together, you're going to leave a turning gap in the lining pieces. So measure the centre of this side and then me mark... Measure and mark, you can just use pins, one inch either side of this centre mark. This will leave marks a two inch turning gap in the centre of the lining edge. So mark this with pins so you don't forget. Now sew together all the way round, but don't sew around the cut out corners. So you'll need to start and finish on each seam, sewing all the way across the ends of the zip tabs as well. Now we're going to box the corners. This will give depth to your pouch. So the best way to do this is to take the outers, pull them apart slightly, then match the side seam to the bottom seam. If you press this open slightly with your just with your fingers, then you can actually see the seams and you can make sure that they match up neatly. Once you've got them, the seams matching up, just pop a pin in to hold them flat. Repeat this on the other outer corner. And pin it together again so it lays flat. You can now finish off your tablet pouch. Sew across each of the pinned boxed corners in the outers and the lining to create that bit of depth. To turn right sides out, put your fingers inside the case and grab hold of one of the opposite corners between your finger and thumb. Pull it out right sides out through the turning gap that you left in the lining earlier. Ease out the box corners to make sure they're lying nice and flat. And then turn the edges of the turning gap under and pin into place. You can now top stitch this closed by machine or you can stip, slip stitch it closed by hand if you prefer, just to hold the turning gap closed. Once that's done, push the lining inside the outer, pushing out those box corners and also pushing out the zip tabs either end of the zip so they lie nice and flat and neat. Push the lining box corners right inside to the matching up with the outer box corners so that the lining lies flat inside. Close the zip and you're done. Open up the case and you can fill it up. Put plasters in the bottom ouch pocket section so they're easy to find. 
I always put some antiseptic cream in there as well. The zip pocket at the top is really useful for scissors, for cutting bandages and plasters. You can put all other smaller pieces in there. A roll of micropore tape, some throat sweets. Zip it all up and it's done. Now, you can keep different sized tablets or smaller first aid items in your tablet pouch so they're easy to hand. Pop that into your first aid case. And it's all ready to go.